Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church. Sorry we're running a few moments behind. We are doing some last minute rewiring of everything. That's a little hot. Could we, is there, how much do you make? Super. So, welcome. On this beautiful Sunday, we are very happy to have you with us, guests and members alike. A couple quick notes. Uh, if you have any prayer requests this morning, we have yellow cards in the pews in front of you. Everyone has prayer requests at all points in all walks of life. We invite you to share them so that we have an opportunity to pray over you. You're here, your family, family is to pray over each other. So if you do have any prayer requests, write them down on the yellow card in front of you and we'll gather them up during the third song. There are also blue cards in the pews in front of you and we'll be gathering those up mostly as a record of attendance. So guests and members alike, we do also ask that you fill those out. So now as we begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we invite you to stand and sing with us as we begin worship together. Thank you. 
You may be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite our scripture reader to come forward. No. <laughs> the baton has been passed. The Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness, and I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and will bring them into their own land, and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in the, all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy, 
I will feed them in justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and male goats. It is not enough for you to feed on the good pasture, that you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pasture and to drink of the clear water, that you must muddy the rest of the water with your feet, and must my sheep eat what you have trodden with your feet and drink what you have muddied with your feet. from Timothy. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service. Though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life, to the King of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I have been listening to the lessons and studying them all week. And we always have the closest connection between the Old Testament and the Gospel lesson. The uh, Epistle lesson always is a, the practicality, the putting into practice uh, what the Lord says. But as you were hearing uh, Elder Lance just reading, uh, 17 times in that Old Testament lesson, the Lord says, I will do this for you 17 times. And finally, I will be your Lord. It's worth looking at again as you do your Bible studies this week. If you're able, we invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel from Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 10, which also serves for our... Um, text for our sermon for today. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. And so he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy before the angels the angels of God, over one sinner who repents. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated, and as we continue singing together this morning, the elders will gather up prayer requests. Beyond all measure, let 
this time, one of my favorite parts of the service, I invite you to stand, greet your neighbor, and share the peace. Why don't you come up and do announcements? Good morning. I was told there were some announcements on the slides this morning. Maybe there are. No. All right. Oh, there is. All right. Bring a friend to church. Uh, I believe that's... Uh, is that next week? It's not today. Can I say something about here. bring a friend to church? Oh, of course, Pastor. Oh, I'm going to be back next week. Um, that's not any reason to invite a friend to come, by the way. But um, maybe to see my wife, that would be okay. Um, but really, really, I want you to pray about this, about bringing a friend to church next week. I, I kind of group people into special needs, you know, maybe you can think of somebody you haven't seen for a while. Maybe all they need is a phone call from you. And just say, how you doing? 
Can you join us for worship this week? Let's even go out to brunch after worship. How's that sound? Wouldn't that be great? Or think about people in your family. Every one of us has people in our family that are not in church. But pray about that. Who can you invite? Or a third category of people. People you know that are hurting. People you know that the only thing that's going to solve their pain is to hear the good news about Jesus. So pray about these three groups of people this week. Give somebody a call, maybe more than one family, and invite them to be here. Thank you, Pastor. And on those uh, words of prayer, just a reminder on the back of your, uh, the, uh, the welcome to worship, the, the pamphlet that you have, on the back there, we ask everybody, and uh, as always, uh, most of you already know this, but uh, throughout the week, whenever you have a moment to pray for everybody on the back of the, uh, on the paper here, that's why those names are there, so everyone can take those home and uh, say a prayer for them throughout the week. And if you want to add anyone to that list, you can on those yellow cards. There's a checklist that says add to the three-week list. That's what that means. You can add it to the back here, and, uh, and people will pray that list uh, throughout the week. Uh, starts October the 11th, we have Extreme grand Grandparenting, uh, a program going on here on, uh, on the Trinity campus. It looks All right, and that looks like it's it. Thank you. Good morning, Trinity. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon text for today is a gospel lesson which I had read just a few minutes ago. You might remember that we kind of rustled last week with uh, the whole idea of the cost of discipleship. But I'm going to suggest that we might be doing the same kind of thing today as we're looking at what we're hearing in the Gospel lesson from Luke chapter 15. If you have your pew Bible or um, your own Bible and want to open to Luke 15 beginning at verse 1 and following, um, I encourage you to join and follow along. I've entitled the sermon, There is Joy in Heaven Over One Sinner Who Repents. Well, we first have to set the stage for what's happening in our lesson for today. And as we take a look at it, we have to realize that Jesus has already completed all of his Galilean ministry, and he is already now on his way, traveling from Galilee to Jerusalem, where he's going to be crucified. The news about Jesus in Galilee and, and the surrounding regions has spread so that people everywhere, for miles, as much as 50, 60, 70 miles away, have heard of Jesus' miracles, of his raising people from the dead, of his healing people. And so people are coming to hear as we turn and look at Luke 15, verse 1, notice what Luke says to us. Now, all the tax collectors and the sinners were coming near to Jesus and listening to him. Jesus is extracting a lot of people. In fact, in society, Many of the people that Jesus was attracting may have been people that were not regarded as being worthy of being attracted. Tax collectors, sinners, and yes, we even know about the stories about the prostitutes. But Jesus looked at these people and he welcomed them as they came near to listen to him. Jesus likes their coming. 
He wants their coming. And he permits their coming without any prerequisites. They don't have to come to prove anything. There doesn't have to be a probationary period to see if you're good enough to spend time with Jesus. The crowds drawing near to hear Jesus are attracting lots of attention of others. And so our gospel lesson continues to say in verse 2, but the Pharisees and the scribes began to grumble. This man receives sinners and he eats with them. This grumbling has been going on for 10 chapters. We can go all the way back to Luke chapter 5 when Jesus asks Levi, a tax collector, to be one of his disciples. And yes, the scribes and the Pharisees already back then are grumbling and complaining about who Jesus is associating with. Levi is so excited when he is asked to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. He invites Jesus and all of the disciples and all of his friends. And then Levi invites as many and all of the tax collectors that he knows to come to his house for a grand feast and celebration. And so, of course, the scribes and the Pharisees say again, why do you eat with them, with tax collectors and with sinners? And Jesus answered even back then, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick need the physician. I have come not to call the righteous, but I have come to call sinners to repentance. Remember the movie, The Music Man? Let me just jog your memory for a minute. The movie is set back in 1912. Professor Harold Hill deliberately gets the people excited in this city of River City, Iowa, raising a concern that the young boys are being seduced into a world of sin by the pool table that is in town. Ah, and so we get all these beautiful songs to remember, like 76 trombones, yes? Or this one, trouble. Oh, we got trouble right here in River City. We got trouble with a capital T. Well, that's exactly where the scribes and Pharisees are coming from as we look at our Luke 15 gospel lesson for today. Jesus is causing an issue, a problem here. It's something that we haven't had to deal with for a time. Jesus is attracting people that are not necessarily reputable people. You see, the people that Jesus is attracting are the people that we often avoid and try to not be with them. And so the scribes and the Pharisees begin to grumble. These first two verses really set the stage for everything else that's happening in Luke chapter 15. You see, with the tax collectors and the sinners drawing near to Jesus so that they might hear him, and the scribes and the Pharisees grumbling about who he's associating with, leads Jesus now to tell these three parables the lost sheep, the lost coin. We heard both of those this morning. There's one more. We won't hear it the next Sunday or the following Sundays. We'll just kind of skip over it because there's so much in Luke we have to cover before the end of the church year. But there's one more, the lost son. Or as I like to call these parables as I look at them, because I'd rather focus on Jesus I focus on them and I call these parables the seeking shepherd, the seeking woman, 
the seeking father. I say that because in all other religions you can name, all other religions, man is trying to seek and find God. Not in Christianity. In Christianity, everything depends on the Lord seeking the lost. Amen? Amen. Jesus now begins the first parable which we have heard today. He begins, What man among you, if he has a hundred sheep and has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? The man with a hundred sheep who's lost one does not abandon the one. In fact, the emphasis in our parable is on finding something that is very, very, very precious to him. You know, already we're getting a little trouble because we've heard only part of the story. And we begin to analyze and try to figure out, well, what is Jesus talking about here? Who is the man with a hundred sheep who's lost one of them? Is it our Heavenly Father? Who are the 99? Surely it's us, right? Who's the one that is lost? You know, by trying to analyze the story before we even get to the details where Jesus is giving the explanations, we really get ourselves in trouble. Though Jesus is seeking all nations. Yes, he is. And his command is to go and do that. This parable is not about that. This parable is not about the churched and unchurched. This parable is not about the Christian and the non-Christian. This is parable, this story is not about us and about them. No, that was a mistake that the Pharisees and the scribes were making. Jesus clarifies the parable for us as he goes on in verse 5. When the man with 100 sheep has lost one and finds that lost sheep, he takes that sheep, he picks it up, He drapes it over his shoulders, showing the total helplessness of that lost sheep. How delighted. How delighted is that man and he finds that lost sheep and brings him home. How delighted is that woman when she finds that lost coin and she brings it home. How delighted is the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord to save sinners. You know, in all of these three parables, the lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son, a party is formed. A celebration takes place. The rejoicing cannot be contained just by the man with the hundred sheep. He wants to celebrate and share this joy with everyone. The woman, think about this woman, 10 coins. Maybe it was a wedding dowry or something. She lost one, but she's so joyous, so joyous. She probably spends far more on that celebration, inviting her neighbors to come and celebrate that she has found this lost coin. Jesus now brings clarity to us about who is the 99 and who is the one lost sheep. Jesus goes on to say in verse 7, I tell you that in the same way there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need No repentance. Jesus now draws the line. Jesus is the only one that can do this, by the way. He, on the one hand, pictures those who draw near to hear him, who repent, those who need Jesus, those with whom he wants to fellowship. And on the other hand, 
there are those who seem to have no need for Jesus, no need to repent, who are secure in their own righteousness. But it's clear as we look at the, te- as the text and the story and this, this parable, the lost sheep and the lost coin, those who are drawing near and wanting to hear what Jesus say, the tax collectors, the sinners, those who are coming and seeking repentance, these are the ones that are bringing joy in the heavenly places. So who are the 99? We know this much, don't we? There was no party for them. You see, I am the lost sheep. I am the lost coin. And when Jesus finds you and me, even if it's a third time this week, or even if it's a third time this morning, Jesus, our good shepherd, picks us up, puts us over his shoulders, and rejoices. And he carries us home, and he invites everyone, including all of heaven, to rejoice and celebrate. Oh, think about it. The Lord rejoices when sinners continually humble themselves and come and repent and repent and repent. This morning, we come humbly before Jesus to draw near to him, to hear what he has to say to us. As he hears our confession, we hear the good news. Your sins are forgiven you. Come. Come humbly to the Lord's table again today and rejoice with Jesus in the forgiveness and in seeking and finding me. Now may the peace of God, which far surpasses all our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
if you're able, we invite you to stand for prayer. Let us pray to the Lord, who in Christ will hear our prayers and in his time turn our mourning into dancing. Heavenly Father, heaven rejoices when a sinner repents. Guard us against self-righteousness that sees no need to hear of Christ and his redemption and preserve us in your word and grace that as your people we might always be about the proclamation of repentance and the forgiveness of sins for the sake of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, protect us from all disobedience, profanity, sexual immorality, deceit, false doctrine, and all things that would make us unholy and defiled by sin and sharpen our attention to your law that we may not make excuses for lawlessness and indulge our sinful nature. Preserve us continually in repentance and in your love grant to us a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith for the sake of your Son who came into this world to save sinners. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Grant, Lord God, you promised to shepherd your sheep. And for the sake of Jesus, we ask that you hear our prayers for those that we now bring before you as elder lamps comes forward to share with us. Father in heaven, we pray for those recently arrived in the kingdom of heaven and their families, Lisa and Christopher. Lord, we pray you bring comfort to those who mourn their passing. We pray for your healing hand and watchful eye for Mary and her upcoming surgery, as well for Ken as he heals from pneumonia. Lord, we give thanks and praise to you for the safety of Jimmy and Michael after a boating accident. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you seek out your sheep from all nations and gather them into your fold. Remember all refugees who have been displaced from their homes because of threats and violence. Provide for their needs in their time of displacement and grant them the security of a home once more. Likewise, provide for the needs of immigrants. Grant wisdom to nations for the welfare of both citizens and sojourners. And grant that your people might prove to be good neighbors for all who are scattered far from home. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, on this day, of remembrance in our land, 9-11. Remind us always of the realities of evil and death in this world and further keep us in the certainty that Christ has overcome the world. Preserve peace in this and every nation. Thwart the plans of all who desire violence and war and give to rulers wisdom and integrity to protect the innocent and punish the evildoer. Lord, in your mercy. God of the ages, in the fullness of time, your Son became flesh, and he received the sinners and ate with them on his way to the cross. Bless all those whom he feeds today with his own holy body and blood and guard them from impenitence and resistance to your promises. And with forgiveness, grant them life and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, delighting in heaven's joy, over one person who repents. We give thanks for all the saints who have gone before us and now share in the rejoicing around your throne. Preserve us in that faith and hope until the day when you gather us to yourself in heaven where we will look with joy upon the Lamb who was slain and whose blood set us free to be your people. For he lives and reigns with you and the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now join in the prayer that our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven. Our Lord.
Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he gave thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also after supper he took the cup, and when he had supped, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is a new covenant in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this often in remembrance of me. Come. Come for the celebration. The table is now ready.
mercy on bring I bow down in your presence at your throne. you to pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, what a joy to stand in your presence and to celebrate with you, for you have found the lost sheep. And we rejoice, Lord, that you continue to seek us out. And now, Lord, you're sending us to seek out others, to invite others to join us this coming Sunday so that we might also celebrate together your grace and your mercy. Oh Lord, we thank you for refreshing us with your own true body and blood for our journey this week. Oh Lord, may your spirit empower us and guide us in all that we do, as you seek us and we follow you, in Jesus' name, amen.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. and serve the Lord.